man, I, I used the, the camera to shoot like a gaming video, and now the stand's all messed up. <laughs> uh, of course. Oh, well, you know, we, it is what it is. Today for Halloween Month 2021 reviews, we're reviewing the Image comic book, Black Science Issue 1. I can't remember when this came out. Uh, let me check. It's rated M for Mature. This came out November 2013. Written by Rick Remender, Rick, Rick Remender with art by Matteo Scalera. Right? So I'll show you the interior book. Right. I mean the interior art. Some really cool imagery in this book. I gotta be careful because there's nudity in this book. But it's like alien. It's like furry nudity. There's like a... There's like a naked fish woman uh, in the book. Alright. Yeah. So what the book is about is basically... This book is about this anarchist scientist called Grant McKay who's on the cover... Who took his family and a team of scientists uh, uh, on, like, basically this journey to test out this, like, this uh, transportation device called the the pillar, right? And basically, what happens is they get they get stranded on this alien world where you have these, like. The, the frogmen and the fishmen who are at war with each other, right? And our characters have, like, uh, two of our characters, Grant McKay and Jen, which is not clear if Jen is his wife or, like, just a number, a member of the team, right? Um, they, they, they go and, um, they go looking for water for the pillar. If they don't get clean water... Uh, the pillar will just will be dis destroyed and uh, kill everyone around it. <laughs> so the, our characters are on a race against time when they're getting chased by the f frogmen and the lizard, the lizard men. Sorry, the fish men who ride these like little snake lizards, right? Which uh, there's the pillar and the group of scientists. Right, and it turns out that the at, at the end you find out that oh the pillar might have been sabotaged, right? And uh, yeah, they suffer, f it, um, they suffer like a fatality, and they get they they use the machine again, and they get transported to this reality where like you have these World War One soldiers fighting like futuristic like. <laughs> Uh, futuristic, like, aliens or whatever, right? So, that's the end of the issue. What's cool about this book, it totally has this horror sci-fi, uh, horror sci-fi feel to it. Everything that goes wrong pretty much does, which is, that's what's cool about Rick Remender. He's not afraid to, like, uh, lead the, lead the narrative to uncertain ground where you think... Uh, the, the characters are fucked, <laughs> especially if you've ever read his other sci-fi uh, series, Fear Agent, which is also published by Image, if I remember correctly, right? Um, I, my problem with the book is that the art is a little cartoony, so because of the cartoony art, it's when, like, you know, when shit goes wrong, like, you know, there's, like, deaths and, like, you know... The scary scenes or whatever. It's not as impactful. Because you know it's a cartoony art style. But overall I thought the book was good. Though I thought the whole f thing. Where like the scientists are like. Anarchists are like what the fuck. <laughs> what, what's the point. What was the point of that. Other than like you know. Uh, well I think the point of the book is like. It's called Black Science. Because you have scientists. Who are anarchists, don't believe in authority and rules, right? Uh, decide to break the taboo of black science, which is like forbidden science, I guess. 
kind of like black magic, I guess, but for science, right? And uh, they, 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 they break, I guess it's taboo to travel to other dimensions, especially when you don't bring uh, guns along. That, that very much worked out great for our character, by the way. Uh, right? Yeah, so overall, I thought the book was good, but I'm only giving it like a 6.5 out of 10. So my next con uh, Halloween month review is going to be Frankenstein, Asian of S.H.I.E.L.D., Volume 1, War of the Monsters. This is New 52. This is the sequel to the Flashpoint Frankenstein book that I reviewed earlier this month, right? So make sure to check that out uh, tomorrow. So we have, uh, I'm doing another movie review for you guys. I'm just putting this here for the thumbnail, right? And that that is the Takeshi Miike film, uh, Gozu, right? Which is... Uh, which came out in 2003. It's like a horror comedy movie. It's like two hours and seven minutes. Right? And it's the story is about basically you have this Yakuza played by Sho Aizawa, if I'm, if I'm pronouncing his name right, who was in movies like the Dead or Alive trilogy. He was in Takeshi Miike's uh, superhero movies, uh, Zebra Man 1 and 2, right? And he plays this uh, this yakuza called uh, Ozaki, who goes crazy after watching this video <laughs> that they all, that they all watch at the at this like cafe, uh, which the yakuza are about to have a meeting. He goes crazy like and sees like this chihuahua out outside and murders it in front of everybody, <laughs> right? Which that usually when I see dogs get killed in movies. Or, you know, pets in general. That kind of pisses me off. But, like, here it's, like... It's it's the catalyst for the plot, right? And, uh... So that didn't bother me too much. Though it kind of did. Because, <laughs> like, the story is basically, like... Uh, after that... Um... A after that... The main character... The guy who becomes the main character after that... Is Minaru who is chosen by the Yakuza boss to take to take Ozaki to um, Nagoya to their um, to their uh, fuck what do they call it whatever their site where they di dispose of dead bodies right which is a which is a junkyard with a press right so he he um, takes a, he takes Ozaki who is his friend by the way out the to Ozaki on the pretense that they're going there uh, to do something for the boss, right? When really he's there to, like, you know, uh, kill him. Which is, like, if you know anything about the mafia and stuff like that, that's usual, that's, like, that's usual pre procedure for the mafia. If if somebody fucks up and you have to kill him, you, you, they uh, kill one of their own. They usually, they send, like, somebody from the family who's their best friend and they, they do it like, you know, um, uh, like, it, like, it comes out of nor nowhere, right? Which I think in, like, the go Goodfellas or whatever, um, there's, a, like, a line from, like, uh, Ray Liotta where he says that. Uh, it's like a, it's like a, a, a awesome monologue, right? So, like, yeah, uh, what, what happens is that, uh, Ozaki, <laughs> Ozaki, um, causes this traff this, like, car accident on the highway uh get gets his uh hit on the head right and uh falls asleep so like minaro stops at this like cafe the this cross-dressing like uh hostess cafe by mistake uh goes in there to like you know uh get some coffee ends up getting sick from like uh from like the soup or something that they they gave him right and uh, pukes, right? And when he comes out, uh, Ozaki's gone, right? So the movie is mo most of the movie is our Yakuza character get getting into hijinks, looking for Ozaki, and then at the last, like after an hour and thirty minutes, the movie, like you know, the movie just takes this weird turn. Where the, the movie forgets that it's kind of... It's supposed to be like a horror movie, right? Where Ozaki um, 
our character, uh, after staying at this weird, like, hotel run by this, like, middle-aged brother and sister who, the, 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 the sister who run, runs the place, who has, like, uh, who has breast milk and has big tits, who tries to seduce our main character, um, it's just, she's just a weird character, right? And, uh, yeah, after, he, he finds out basically that, uh, Osaki was staying at the, <laughs> at the same hotel as him, which was a cool reveal, right? Um, sp sp uh, spoiler alert <laughs> for that, right? Uh, which he founds, uh, finds out about that because uh, he goes on, like, you know, uh, ask, he goes from place to place where Ozaki was at, asking people, right? And there's this, the, I thought the movie wasn't funny, really, but there's like, there's like two funny things in the movie. One, um, one of the places he has to go is this Japanese, uh, is, sorry, this rice, uh, this pl place where this uh, guy makes rice, right? And, uh, he's telling him that after he, uh, he's telling Minaro after Ozaki left, he, he went to this Japanese sake place run by this man and his American wife, <laughs> And now uh, that that and uh, how that's messed up, and he's like, "Well, what's messed up with the ma with the man like <laughs> marrying a Amer American woman?" <laughs> it just reminded me of like when somebody when you're having a casual conversation with somebody, and then like somebody says something racist, <laughs> right? And then they they have to backtrack and come up with a, a different excuse. Like the old man makes an excuse, like, "Of course, it's messed up." Uh, it's supposed to be authentic Japanese sake, and in in it's being made by an American woman. <laughs> Which, her Japanese is, like, I, I I, don't know. I think they probably just got, like, some tourists or whoever, or some woman from a temp agency, and they just got, like, you know, they just dubbed over her, right? Because, like, she looked, she looked weird. Because, like, she looked like... That woman looked like she was straight out of the 80s or 90s, early 90s. And this is supposed to be a 2003 movie. It's like, what the fuck, right? Yeah, so, like, after he finds out, like, you know, uh, where Ozaki is, he finds out, like, Os uh, basically something happens, and, like, Osaki comes back, who's, who was 40 years old, by the way, 40-year-old Japanese man, uh, comes back as, like, 20-year-old Japanese woman who's, like, super attractive. <laughs> And is try, 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 trying to tempt Minaro to fuck him. <laughs> Which, at the end of the movie, the the climax of the movie is basically our character. It becomes almost like a love story. Where Minaru saves the female Ozaki from, like, getting killed, from getting, like, you know, raped and killed by the Yakuza boss, right? Who can't... Who the old Yakuza boss who can't get hard unless he has a ladle up his ass, <laughs> right? <laughs> Which leads to his death. <laughs> oh my god! And um, he bangs the female Minaro, and then the that's where the movie remembers that it's supposed to be a horror movie, and you see the this fucked up scene where like uh, s s where a hand comes out of what's uh, the female Osaki's. Uh, vagina, and then, like, Osaki is reborn from the female Osaki, and then the movie just cuts, and then, like, there's this awkward cut, and then, like, the movie, the movie ends with the main character, and the main character, like, you know, I guess a weird bisexual threesome polyamorous relationship with the male Ozaki and the female Ozaki. And it's like, what the fuck is this, right? And the movie's named after uh, Gozu, which is like the... Gozu is like a cow-headed... Uh, cow-headed man, right? Which is like a demon in Japanese, uh, Japanese mythology. Kind of like the reverse of the Kudan, which I reviewed a manga, a horror manga called Kudan no Gotoshi. About this mythical monster that it's like a cow with a human's face, so it's kind of like the Gozu 
in the trailer, the movie makes it, you think it's, this is like a, a fucking ghost or monster movie, and you watch it, and it's just this weird, like, whodunit, like, horror, like, noir uh, comedy with Yakuza, and then it just takes this weird, awkward turn. I think the movie is good, but I don't know how, it's just, so, it's just so weird, I don't know even know how to fucking rate it. As far as, I would say, entertainment-wise, it was like a 6.5 out of 10, but as, like, you know, a uh, piece of art, I don't know, man. It's a fucking weird movie, and you just have to check it out for yourself. Um, yeah. <laughs> then again, it's Japanese movies, you know. Like you, you, I don't know, I think if you love weird Japanese movies, you'll enjoy it, but it's not, you know. I, I kind of wish it was more, like, horror uh, horror, like, you know, fo uh, focused, because this is, like, Takeshi Miike is supposed to be one of the masters of horror of Japan, which he was, he directed an episode of Masters of Horror, <laughs> uh, so it's like, what the fuck, dude, this movie wasn't even scary, <laughs> which, you know, it, I mean, it didn't even have enough, uh, like, it doesn't even have, the, like, that many, like, scary parts in the movie. Though the scariest part of the movie to me was when he when he actually bangs the female Osaki. It's like, dude, like you know that, dude, that was your buddy. <laughs> oh man, yeah. So it's a, it's a weird movie. Check it out if you want. Uh, all right, that's it for this review, guys. Peace. Oh, and if you like Digimon, check out my Digimon World Three video.